Hi, this is Kerry Shirley for Gas Powered Thoughts. Today I want to talk about the break-in procedure for the Gowie T10 engine. It's a little different than a typical Zenoa gas engine because this is basically a converted glow engine. As such, it requires a more detailed and thorough break-in to be successful once you get it in the model. If you look at the instructions that came with this engine, Gowie actually recommends mounting it in the model and idling it for four tanks of fuel. Now that's going to take hours. I don't know about you, but I really don't have time to do something like that. I'm going to find that very boring and uh, difficult to do. So I'm going to show you how to put it on a run-up stand, much like you would an RC airplane engine, and put a propeller on it and actually break it in like you would, uh, as I said, a typical glow engine. So let's get started with that process. So let's start off by getting the needle valve settings ready for break-in. This is the low speed needle. The instructions will tell you to set this at four and a quarter turns from fully closed. The way to get it fully closed is to literally grab the throttle barrel and hold it shut while you screw the needle valve in until it seats. Now what I found was four and a quarter turns was so rich I couldn't even get it started. So what I recommend you do is simply set it so that it's flush with the machine surface on the outside of the carburetor here like you see, that's going to be a good spot for it. Now on the high speed needle, which is this big one, the instructions specify setting it one and a quarter turns out. I set it at about one and a half, which seemed to be a good spot for uh, the break-in process. If you're going to mount a prop on the front of the engine, I'd recommend an 11.8, preferably wood. Goes over the shaft, use the nut that came with the engine, plus a washer. It's going to go up against the timing ring as shown. Make sure this is good and tight, and check it occasionally to make sure it stays tight. Building a run-up stand isn't very complicated. I built this from a sawhorse and a piece of shelving and a JTEC engine mount. All you really need is a way to mount the engine and the fuel tank, and in this case the electronic ignition and a battery to power it. As you can see, I also added a servo and a receiver so I could control this remotely uh, I don't have to stand next to it while it's running. And as you see in a little bit later, it wasn't just a constant RPM run. The only other thing you need to do is uh, mix up some fuel. I always run lantern fuel, even in this engine, like Coleman type lantern fuel. And you need a great deal of oil for this engine for reasons I outlined in my build thread. You need 20% oil, which is about 25 ounces per gallon. It's quite a bit of oil, but once you get it mixed up, you're ready to start your run-in process, which we'll follow up with next. Initially, we're going to run the engine at an idle, but not for four tanks of fuel, only for about 10 minutes, just long enough for it to get up to operating temperature, and then you're going to shut it down and let it cool off completely. As you can see, it's going to be running pretty rough because it's very rich at this point, and that's exactly what you want. After the initial run-in, you want to run the engine at about one-third throttle for about three tanks of fuel, letting it cool down between each one. The fuel will actually go fairly quickly because the engine is still rich at this point. This is about how it'll sound. Now you want to run two tanks of fuel at about three-quarters throttle. It shouldn't be too stroking at this point. If it is, you need to richen it up some. It should sound about like this. If it is too stroking, then go ahead and richen it up slightly. Now in stage three, you're going to start varying the engine speed from idle all the way up to full throttle. And you're going to cycle it up and down in that manner through a full tank of fuel. As you get towards the end, you might consider leaning the high speed needle just slightly so that the engine is able to two stroke. But you don't want to hold it in that mode for very long before going back to idle. Finally in stage four, you're going to simply run the engine at full speed for a full tank of fuel. You want to make sure you let it come up to operating temperature before you do this, however. Finally, you want to switch the prop out to a 10.8 and make another full speed run for a full tank of fuel. You're going to need to richen it up slightly because the engine's going to be turning much faster at this point. And that's really it. At this point, the engine's ready to fly. Go ahead and take it off the run-up stand, build it according to the build thread, put it in the helicopter, go ahead and fly the model. I would take it easy on it for the first flight, but after that it's ready to go. Hope this was helpful. Have fun.